I want to share with you a, a quick word today that I call, where are you, God? Where are you? Have you ever said that? You know, as Christians, we go through things in our life, just like everyone else does, and there are times when it seems like we just can't see God. We know He promised to be with us, but we just can't see Him. In Matthew 28, 20, Jesus said, I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. He's always, always, that means always, right? So we know from the Word that God is with us, and sometimes His presence seems so real, so obvious. We know what He's doing, we see Him working, but then there are times when we just can't seem to see God, and it seems like maybe He's abandoned us, or He's quiet, or silence in regard to our life. You may be going through a difficult circumstance. You may be praying, quoting scriptures, exercising your faith, doing everything that you know to do, and yet you don't see what God's doing. You can't figure it out. You don't see how He's doing it. You don't, it doesn't feel like God is anywhere around you. And in those moments, we cry out, God, where are you? Well, I want to help you today. I want to help you know how to see God in every situation and circumstance in life so that no matter what you're going through, whether you're on the mountaintop or whether you're down in the valley, you can see the Lord. Today, I want to help you recognize God no matter what so that you can relate to him. You can take advantage of his presence. I want to bridge the gap between your problems and his presence. Are you with me today? And I'm going to be reading out of Luke chapter 24. This is the story of the two men on the road to Emmaus. Let me set this up for you. Jesus has been crucified. The whole uh, you know, nation of Israel knows about it, especially the city of Jerusalem. It's all of the, the talk going around the town. And Jesus is resurrected, but not everyone knows it yet. So, and behold, two of them were going that very day to a village named Emmaus, which was about seven miles from Jerusalem. And they were talking with each other about all these things which had taken place. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself approached and began traveling with them. But their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are these words that you are exchanging with one another as you're walking? And they stood still, looking sad. One of them named Cleopas answered and said to him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem and unaware of the things which have happened here these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him, The things about Jesus, the Nazarene, who was a prophet, mighty in deed, and in word, and in the sight of God and all the people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered him to the sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that it was he who was going to redeem Israel. Indeed, besides all this, it is the third day since these things happened. But also some women among us amazed us when they were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just exactly as the woman also had said. But him they did not see. And he said to them, O foolish men and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary for the Christ to suffer these things and to enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and with all the prophets, he explained to them the things concerning himself in all the scriptures. And they approached the village where they were going, and he acted as though he were going farther. But they urged him, saying, Stay with us, for it is getting toward evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. And when he had reclined at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed it. And breaking it, he began giving it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. And he vanished from their sight. They said to one another, Were not our hearts burning within us while he was speaking to us on the road and while he was explaining the scriptures to us? And they got up that very hour and returned to Jerusalem and found gathered together the eleven disciples and those who were with them, saying, The Lord has really risen and has appeared to Simon. 
and they began to relate their experience on the road and how he was recognized by them in the breaking of the bread. Father, I thank you for this great word. I pray, God, that you'd make your word real to us today, that we may know you in each and every circumstance, that we would never feel like we can't see you in our lives. I pray that you reveal yourself to us, Lord. In Christ's name I pray, amen and amen. Jesus was with them all along, but they couldn't recognize him. They were, in fact, the Bible says, kept from recognizing him. Why? Why were they kept from recognizing Jesus? And are you and I kept from recognizing him from time to time? These two men are so much like us today. And through this simple short journey that we see, the road to Emmaus, there are some things we can learn about how to recognize Jesus in each and every situation in our life. The, there are some things I want you to notice. They were talking about the situation and not the Savior. A lot of times when we're going through things, we get focused on our situation. In verse 14, it says, and they were talking with each other about all these things that had happened. Now, that's just normal life. Things happen, whether they be good or bad. If big things happen, we tend to focus on the things that are happening around us. And that's exactly what they were doing. They were dwelling on the circumstance and how Jesus fit within the midst of the circumstance. I want you to pay attention to these things. They were focused on the circumstance. Not only that, they had their own idea about how they thought everything should turn out. Verse 21, they said, but we had hoped that he was going to be the one to redeem Israel. Have you ever looked at your circumstance, the situation you're in, you're focused on it, and you have an idea in your brain of how you think it should turn out? You get your will out there and you put your will out there and that's what you're looking for. So you're looking at the circumstance. You're trying to apply your will to what should be done. Third thing, they figured that it was too late. Verse 21. And besides all this, it is now the third day since all this stuff has happened. They were, they were kind of giving a postmortem on the life of Jesus. How did all of this happen? We thought he was going to be the one to redeem Israel, and yet he was crucified. This happened three days ago. Now the women are saying he's resurrected. We don't know what's going on. It, it seems like we can't figure out where God is in the midst of all of this. It would have been easy for them to see God if God would have done what they wanted in the way they wanted it done. They couldn't figure out what was going on. It didn't make sense. What is God doing? We thought Jesus was going to do things a certain way, accomplish a certain thing. And because he didn't, it seems like God is not there. Why did Jesus die? What's going to happen now? They thought he would deliver Israel from the Romans. Now, they thought that Jesus was going to gather an army. He was going to become famous, become a political, social, civil leader. He was going to overthrow Rome, set Israel free, sit on a physical earthly throne, and was going to be king over Israel and going to bring back the sort of promised land days for Israel. That's what they were hoping was going to happen, but it didn't. Nothing like that happened. In fact, Jesus didn't seem to be interested in that at all. So where are you, God? What are you doing? This, is, this obviously is a, a, a guy that's sent from God. He's done all these miracles, raised the dead, has all of this great knowledge. What in the world is going on, God? I don't see you in this. I don't recognize God in this situation. They were talking about the situation and they couldn't see Jesus was standing right there with them. Oftentimes, Jesus is right there with us and we don't see it because we're focused on the wrong things. Let me just encourage you today, just because you don't see Jesus doesn't mean he's not there. He's there. He said, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the very end of the age. When you're healthy, he's there. When you're sick, he's there. When you have money, he's there. And when you're flat broke, he's there. When you're happy, he's there. And when you're depressed and blue, he's there. When you're on top of the mountain, he's there. And when you're at your lowest low, he is there. No matter where you are in your life, 
Jesus is there, child of God. He's with you. Sometimes we don't recognize him. Sometimes we're kept from recognizing Jesus. Why? Listen to this, because we're looking in places that we haven't been given the ability or the authority to comprehend. I want to say that to you again. We are looking for Jesus in places where we haven't been given the permission, the ability, or the authority to see him in. Oh, I'm going to help you today. This is going to help you. We're looking for him in the what? In the what? God, what are you doing? We want to understand the what. Explain to me what your plan is. But Proverbs 29 says this. Many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. Can I promise you something today? God does not always reveal every aspect of his plan to you. Oftentimes he gives you a direction or a next step to take. There's this thing going around on the internet where people say, don't you just wish that Jesus would come sit down next to you and tell you exactly what he was doing. And my response to that is always the same. If Jesus were to come in the flesh and sit down next to you today, and you were to say to him, give me an explanation, you know what he would say to you? He would give you two words. He would say, trust me. And he might follow that with two more words, follow me. This is the nature of living for God. He doesn't give us the what. He doesn't show himself us to us in the what. He's not going to explain to us what his will is all the time. He's going to say to you, trust me, you can make all the plans you want. You can have an idea of how it's supposed to turn out, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will prevail. And can I tell you something? Your mind isn't big enough to comprehend the full plan of God. Come on. The reason that God has kept you from seeing the full plan of God is because it would blow your mind. In fact, it would probably scare you so badly that there would be a hole in the wall shaped just like you where you ran for your life. Come on. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? You can't see Jesus in the what because he is keeping you from seeing what the full plan of God is. You're not supposed to see what God is doing all the time. We're looking for him in the what. That's why we can't see him. We're looking for him in the how. We want to know how he is working on this. God, tell me what you're doing. I don't see what you're doing. Just because you don't see what God's doing doesn't mean he's not doing something. For the Bible says that in all things, God is at work for the good of those who love him, who are the called according to his purpose. Yet oftentimes we don't see it. And it's because we don't understand Isaiah 55, eight and nine. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, says the Lord. Neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. Those last three words are important. It is a declaration of God to you. To all of his children, listen to these words. I'm declaring them to you. My thoughts are not like your thoughts. My ways are not like your ways. Don't think you can look at your situation and you can see all the time what God is doing in the midst of your situation. Why? Because the way God does things is so much higher than your ability to understand and your authority to see. God hasn't given you permission to understand how he does things all the time. Are you hearing me, child of God? The reason you don't see him in the how is because what God is doing is so far above you, you cannot comprehend it. Oh, that is good. Jesus said one time, you don't understand what I'm doing now, but someday you will. When you and I see God face to face, all of this stuff that we can't comprehend, all of the times that we couldn't see what he was doing will make sense. It will all be revealed until then. Trust me. Follow me. Are you hearing me today? The reason you don't see God is because you're looking in the what, you're looking in the how, and you're looking in the why. Why is this happening, God? Why? These men were talking about the, the what, the circumstance. They were talking about the how 
Uh, why didn't God put him on the throne? I don't understand why God wasn't doing what we thought we, he should do. And why? Why is all this happening? This is all a mystery to us. They were looking in three places. They had not been given permission, ability, or authority to look in. God has kept some things for himself. And he gives to us what he wishes to give to us. Are you hearing me today? But we want to know why. God, why? How does any of this make sense? Why did my loved one have to get sick? Why did we have to lose that job? Why did we lose our house? Why are we going through this with our children? Why is the economy this way? Why is America like it is? Why, why, why? We want to know why. But Jesus answered in John 13, 7, what I'm doing now, you do not understand. But afterward, one day, it'll all make sense to you. You see, the why is in God's hands. Can I, can I give you a little piece of advice? Now, this is deep and it's hard to take, but I want you to listen to me today. We talk about giving our problems over to God. But unless you've given the outcome to God, Unless you've given the why over to God, unless you've released it and you don't need to know the why and you don't need to determine the outcome until you've done that, you really haven't given him your problem. It's real, really still yours. You just want God to make your will come to pass. Come on, I'm trying to hear an amen out there. Come on. Are you with me today? The reason you don't see God is because you're looking in the what? What are you doing, God? You're looking in the how. How are you doing it, God? And you're looking in the why. God, why are you doing that? But the God who promised to be with us, to heal us, to provide for us, to protect us is the same God who said, I'm not going to show you that because my ways are above your ways. They couldn't recognize Jesus because they were looking for him in places that God had limited their ability to see him. Oh, that's a word for you today. You know why you don't see God? Because you're looking for him in the what? You want an explanation. What are you doing, God? You're looking for him in the how. You want an explanation. How are you going to do this, God? You're looking in the why. You want an explanation, God. Why are you letting this happen? And God is not going to reveal your, himself to you in those areas. Now, let me promise you. In the what, in the how, in the why, God is there. God is working. He just hasn't given you permission to see what he's doing there. He's keeping you from seeing what he's doing there. Are you with me today? The what is his plan. The how is his way. The when is his time. The why is his purpose. It's all up to him and not you. You thought you knew what he should do. You, not, you thought you, you knew how he should do it. You thought you knew when he should do it and why he should do it. But the truth is God has kept those answers for himself. And the more you and I insist upon God answering those questions, the less likely it is that we're going to recognize him in the middle of those things. And I hope you're getting this. This will change how you go through things. These two men were looking for God in areas that were beyond their ability to perceive him. You and I are still in the flesh. We can't, we don't have a perfect mind, perfect eyes and perfect understanding and wisdom. There are things that are beyond us. And so God doesn't reveal those to us right now. So we trust him. Paul said we see in part. It's like we're looking in, into a mirror that's, uh, that's not clear. We're seeing reflections and glimpses, but we can't really make out everything. And we have to trust him because of that. But let me tell you something. They weren't wrong. These two men were not wrong about everything. They just didn't understand exactly what God was doing. I want you to follow me today. They thought Jesus was the Savior, the Messiah. Was Jesus the Savior, the Messiah? Yes, he was. Yes, he is. He wasn't the Savior that they thought he would be. They thought he would be the national leader who would uh, take Israel and, uh, and get Israel free from Rome. They thought he would be that kind of a Savior. They, they knew the word, right? They knew the word. That's what we, we know the word. We apply the word to our life. But oftentimes we don't really get what God is doing, even in the midst of his word. They missed it. They thought he would redeem Israel. Did he redeem Israel? Yes, he did. And a whole bunch more people. But it wasn't through war. It wasn't through political power. 
It was through his blood, it was through his death, burial, and resurrection that he would redeem Israel. They thought he would rule on the throne as king. Is he on the throne as king? Yes, he is King Jesus, but it's not an earthly throne. It's a throne in heaven. Yeah, he's coming back again someday and he'll sit on an earthly throne here, but right now he is in heaven, King of kings and Lord of lords. They knew the word, they knew the prophets, they knew the promises and they were trying to apply them, but they just couldn't see how it was being done. Why not? Because they were looking for God in areas that they didn't have the permission, the ability, and the authority to see. God kept them from seeing it. Are you with me today? Oh, glory to God. They were right about the things of God. They just couldn't see it because God's ways are above our ways. Come on. Some of you today, you know the word. You know what God's promised. You're quoting it. You're relying on it. But you just can't see God and you're wondering, God, where are you? And you can't see him because he's doing things in ways that are beyond you. He's doing things in ways that are above you. He's got a purpose that's greater than you can understand. Are you catching this today? Oh, glory be to God. The truth is, I'm going to hit you with something hard here. The truth is we're not really looking for Jesus most of the time. We're looking for an explanation. When God doesn't do what we want him to do, when we don't see things going the way we think they should go, we say, Lord, where are you? Because we want an explanation. We don't want to just trust God. We want God to explain to us. We want to feel comfortable and secure in the explanation of God rather than in the presence and promise of God. Oh, that's a good word. Some of you need to get that. We'd rather God explain himself to us than simply be with us. Oh, me. I can't just say, oh, hey, amen. I got to say, oh, me. So today I promised to help you see Jesus in every situation in your life, every time in your life, whether you're on the mountaintop or down in the valley. There's a way to see Jesus. There's a place to see Jesus. And I want to help you today. It's, it's not in the what or the how or the when or the why. The place you can always see Jesus, no matter what, is in the who. It's in the who. It's in relationship. Luke 24, 30 through 35. I want you to catch this today. This is so awesome. When he was at the table with him, he took the bread and blessed it and broke it and gave it to them and their eyes were open and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, did not our hearts burn within us while he was talking with us on the road and while he opened us to us the scriptures and they rose that same hour. They went to Jerusalem. They found the disciples who were with him gathered together and they said, the Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. Did you notice he sat down at the table with him? He blessed the bread, he broke it, and when he handed it to them, their eyes were opened. And they say here, he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. What is the breaking of the bread? What do we do when we break bread? It is communion, right? At church, we celebrate communion and we take the cup and we take the bread and the, the cup represents the blood of the Jesus and of Jesus and the, the bread represents the body of Jesus. And, and why do we do that? Because it symbolizes communion. Communion means you and I are one with Jesus. It's about our relationship with Jesus. Communion is about I'm in Christ and he's in me. I take him into myself because he's taken me into himself by faith. That's what communion is. When they say they knew Jesus in the breaking of the bread, what it means is I couldn't see him in the what. I couldn't see him in the how. I couldn't see him in the when or the why, but I could see him in communion. When I just look to Jesus for Jesus, when I just come to him because he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother, when I just come to him because he's my savior, my redeemer, and my Lord, when I'm not asking for an explanation, I just want to be with him, I just want to trust him, it is then that my eyes are opened and I am in a place where I've been given ability, authority, permission to see him. Are you seeing and hearing this today? Oh, glory to God. No matter what you're going through, you can see Jesus in the breaking of the bread. 
What if today, instead of wanting an explanation from God, you just wanted to sit down across the table and talk to Jesus? If you just wanted to be with him, I promise you today, he will show himself to you. He will make his presence known. The eyes of your spirit will be open and you'll be able to see him today. Yes, God has not revealed himself to you in the what? He's not going to explain himself to you. He's God. He doesn't have to. He's not going to reveal himself to you in the how. He's not going to tell you all the time what he's doing and how he's going to do it. He's not going to tell you when he's going to do it. They thought it was too late. Three days is too late. He's not going to reveal himself to you in the why. Give you an explanation for why you're going through what you're going through or why you're seeing what you're seeing. He's not going to tell you there. He's not going to show himself to you there. He's going to keep quiet in the areas that he hasn't given you position, authority, or ability to see. But he's always going to show himself to you in the who. When you just say, God, I don't want an explanation. I just want you, Jesus. I just want you. That's when our eyes are opened and we see him for who he is and our hearts burn within us and we know God and we know him and there's something about the presence of God that is so powerful because when we get in the presence of God do you notice they stopped talking about the what and they weren't concerned with the how or the when or the why they ran to the disciples and what did they talk about they talked about the who the Savior Jesus everything else doesn't matter all of the other stuff doesn't matter when you get in the presence of God. You will always find Jesus in the who. Thank you, Lord. I just pray for the people that are with me today. I pray, God, that this word go deep in their heart. For those times, God, when we just feel like we don't understand and it doesn't make any sense and, and, and we catch ourselves worried about the what and the how and the when and the why of it all, God, I pray, Lord, that we remember this word that we can always find you in the who. It, it, it is in the breaking of the bread, the communion with Jesus that we always see him. It is then that our eyes are open, Lord, and I pray that you remind us of that Holy Spirit that in those moments that we don't see and know what you're doing, that we'll look for you. We'll sit down in the presence, in the presence of our Lord and Savior, and we just want to know you and just want to be with you. We just want to fellowship with you. And we don't need an explanation, God. We just need you, Lord. And I thank you for that, God. I thank you, Lord. I praise you and I give you glory. For you are our Savior, our God, and our Lord. We know you're with us always. We know that you're in the what and you're working. We know that you're in the how. And you're working. We know that you're in the when and you've got a timetable. We know that you're in the why and you've got a reason for what you're doing. And you know what, God, we're going to let you be God and we're going to be your children. And we're just going to have a relationship with you. And we're just going to trust you with these things. We'll tell you about them. We'll ask you by faith. We'll bring our petition up to you, Lord. But we're not going to worry. We're not going to dwell. We're not going to ask you to explain yourself. We're just going to be with you, Lord. And when it seems like we can't see you, God, we're just going to sit down at the table of fellowship, the table of communion. And we're going to let you offer yourself to us as we offer ourselves to you, Lord. In the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. And amen. God bless you. I love you guys so much, man. God loves you so much. And Jesus is with you. Can I promise you, you'll see him in the who. You'll see him in communion. You'll see him in the breaking of the bread. Thank you so much for being with me today. Pray for us this week. I know God's got us. We're going to get better and hopefully we'll be back uh, in person next Sunday, but we will let you guys know. In the meantime, man, just just uh, walk in the goodness and the glory of God. Sit down at the table of communion with your Savior and just take a look in the eyes of Jesus and all of the other stuff, the what, the how, the when, the why, all of the other questions won't really matter in the presence of our Savior. God bless you.